This is the Acaso Brave 8 action camera, and in this video, I'm aiming to find out if this budget GoPro alternative is any good. Spoiler alert, there are six reasons why I think this is a great action camera, and five reasons why it's not so great. So stick around to find out those reasons, as well as to see some sample footage in comparison to the GoPro Hero 10. So let's start off with some specs. The camera has a built-in lens that is the equivalent of about 16 millimeters f2.5. It also has a lens cover that is replaceable, and it has a front-facing screen and a back-facing screen. The front-facing screen is not a touch screen, unfortunately, but it does give you the ability to preview your footage if you're standing in front of the camera, so it's great for vlogging or for action. But on the back, the LCD is a nice touch screen that is super responsive and also has a really nice UI. Eye. It's pretty intuitive to find your way around the camera. The camera comes with a battery that is replaceable, and the battery lasts for about 90 minutes when you're shooting in 4K. And the camera is also waterproof up to 10 meters, and you can do that without any additional housing. And finally, the camera does have some built-in digital lenses so that you can zoom into your frame a little bit, but there is a bit of a caveat, which I'll discuss later on in this video. And now let's get into some pros of this camera. First of all, it comes with some really competitive video specs. It can shoot in up to 4K 60 frames per second, or 2.7K at 120 frames per second slow motion. Unfortunately, this camera does not shoot in 5K like the GoPro Hero 9 and 10 do, but you can shoot in 8K if you're doing a time lapse, which is pretty mind blowing. The time lapse feature on the Acosta Brave 8 is pretty great. I think the image quality was really nice, and I really like how the time lapse came out. And even though GoPros can shoot in 5K, to my knowledge, they can't do 8K time lapses. So that's a huge plus in favor of the Acaso. Speaking of image quality, that also applies to photo quality. So the Acaso can shoot in up to 48 megapixel photos, which is over double the size of the GoPro. I think they can come out with about 23 megapixel photos on the Hero 10. So 48 megapixels is quite a bit bigger. And I would say that the photo quality is pretty good on this camera, but it's definitely still a video-centric camera first. If you want to shoot photos, then I really think your smartphone would probably do a better job, or just another camera that is dedicated for photos. The third really great feature about the Acaso Brave 8, at least in theory, is the night shooting mode. So I appreciate that this comes as an option, because action cameras, especially GoPros and even Acasos, generally speaking, are not great at shooting in low light, and that really has to do with the camera's size. Because we're getting such a small compact camera, the sensor just isn't great for shooting in low light. And so I appreciate that Acaso has a night shooting mode. Whether it's effective or not, I mean, I don't see a really big difference, honestly, when I'm comparing the footage with and without the night shooting mode, but I like the effort, and I would like to see other action camera companies, especially GoPro, start to focus in on low light capabilities and offer some settings or some features to help us shoot better in low light. The fourth reason why the Acaso Brave 8 is so great is actually one of the biggest pros in its favor, and that is all of these accessories that come with the camera. There are 13 accessories that come with the Acaso Brave 8, and they range from spare batteries to a battery charger to mounts and even a remote. So why is this a big deal? Well, if you buy an action camera from another brand, such as GoPro or DJI, then none of these things are included. You have to buy everything separately, including the spare batteries and the battery charger, and those costs really add up. And this remote in particular, like if you buy the GoPro remote, it's $80. And for Acaso, they include the remote in the package. So I love that about Acaso. I've seen that with their other action cameras as well. So this is a huge, bonus in their favor. And speaking of the price, that is the fifth pro for the Acaso Brave 8. It comes in at 279 US dollars as of right now, and that's roughly half the price of the GoPro Hero 10, or at least what the GoPro was when it first came out. It was over $500, which is the most expensive GoPro 
ever. So GoPro price keeps going up, and the Acaso is a really nice budget option in terms of price. And the last major pro about the Acaso Brave 8 is the fact that it doesn't have any bugs or major problems with it. When I was out filming, this camera was super responsive. It turned on exactly when I asked it to, it started recording when I wanted it to, it never froze or crashed or had any issues. And if you guys have used GoPros in particular, then you know what I'm talking about. GoPros are plagued with these problems that keep happening no matter how new the GoPro is or how many firmware updates come out. GoPros just have issues. And so, you know, the Hero 10 has less issues, but we've still had some freezing problems with it. And Acaso, no freezing problems whatsoever from what I've seen anyway. But with that said, the Acaso is not a perfect action camera, so let's talk about those cons. The first major con of the Acaso Brave 8 is the fact that you have to use a cage to mount to this camera anywhere. So you can see right now that the camera is in a cage and that's how you get these little GoPro feet. So if you wanna attach it to a mount, a tripod, a monopod, a grip, or anything like that, then you have to put the camera in the cage. And this is something that you know GoPros used to be this way, but they've moved away from from that as of the GoPro Hero 8. Now the GoPros have the feet built into the camera so you no longer need the cage. And so I'd like to see a Acaso move in that direction and get rid of this cage because honestly it's plastic, it's not offering a whole lot of protection and it's actually blocking you from accessing the battery. So if you have to change the battery out, if you gotta take the camera out of the cage. So yeah, I'd like to see this cage go away from this camera. The second con is that you have to connect the Acaso Brave 8 to your smartphone app, the Acaso Go app, in order to get good stabilization on your video. I think that's a really big con because it's an extra step and it takes a long time for that video stabilization effect to be added to your video. And so the good thing though is that it is really effective. I think that it makes a big, big difference if you do process your video through the Acosico app. But I did a little trial with a 20 second clip and it took you know several minutes just to process that video in the Brave app. And so I think it's just an extra step that is unnecessary if you're using a camera like the GoPro. So I'd like to see that enhanced video stabilization be built into the camera and not have to use another app in order to get it. With that said, there is a bit of a workaround. You can use an action camera gimbal, such as this Inky Falcon, or there's also the Hohem iSteady Pro gimbal, and you can put the Acaso Brave 8 on this gimbal, and you can film your footage that way. And it does add a lot of stabilization to the video. It's still not perfect, it's not as good as Hyper Smooth on the GoPro, but it's much better, and it doesn't have that extra step of needing to use the Acaso Brave app in order to get good stabilization from this camera but it does add a little bit of cost. I think these gimbals are about $100 extra, so you'd have to pay for that to use the gimbal. Now, since I mentioned the Acaso Go smartphone app, that's another con, and that is the app was super wonky in terms of connectivity. Sometimes it connected to my phone. I'm using a Samsung Galaxy S10, so an Android phone. Sometimes it connected and sometimes it didn't, so it just was really unreliable. But the nice thing is when the camera did connect to the phone, it actually works really well and it unlocks an extra feature of being able to remote control the camera with the smartphone app. And it gives you a nice preview and you can also change the settings. So it's really nice when it does work. The fourth drawback to the Acaso Brave 8 is the fact that you can't easily connect your own external microphone. There's no 3.5 millimeter microphone jack built into the camera, and to my knowledge, there's also not a microphone adapter that you can buy to connect to the camera. So if you wanna add your own external microphone, such as a shotgun mic or a lavalier mic, then I don't think you can easily do it with this camera. With that said, this camera does have two audio modes. There's stereo mode. All right, and now the audio is on stereo mode, so this is what it sounds like as opposed to being on the human mode. And also human mode, which filters out background noise and focuses in on the human voice. 
All right, this is a sound test with the Acasa Brave 8 for using the human voice setting. And this is what it sounds like. So I think the internal microphones on the Acasa Brave 8 are actually pretty decent, but I still like the ability to use my own external microphones if I want to. So the fact that I can't easily do that is a con for this camera. And the final con of the Acasa Brave 8 is the image quality. When you compare it to a camera like the GoPro, the Acasa just falls short despite having all of those really good specs, I just think the GoPro looks a lot better. And that's especially true if you're using any of those digital lenses. I found that if I was starting to zoom in beyond the super wide lens on the Acaso, that the image quality really degraded the more I zoomed in. So personally, I would not use the zoom feature or shoot on any of the lenses besides wide on the Acaso. So in conclusion, I think on paper, the Acaso Brave 8 looks really great. The specs look like they're on par with a GoPro, and in some cases, they even surpass GoPro. But at the end of the day, you get what you pay for. And there's a reason why GoPros are more expensive. The image quality is better as well as the user interface. And most importantly, it has stabilization built into the camera. You don't have to use an app in order to get the best stabilization. This to me is the biggest downfall of the Acaso, and I really, really hope that future versions will have image stabilization baked into the camera and not rely on a secondary app for that. So if you guys are like me and you want the very best action camera that gives you the best image quality and price isn't really a concern, then you've gotta go with the latest GoPro. In this case, it's the GoPro Hero 10. And I really think it's the best GoPro that's ever been made so far. But if you are on a budget and you've got less than $300 to spend on an action camera, then the Acaso Brave 8 is definitely worth looking at. But that's my opinion, and I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you think, if you would try out this camera, or if you have tried this camera, what do you think? Is it worth the money? Let me know. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.